Hello and welcome back to SciTech. Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a dual punk console with using two 555 timers. Let's get started. you're going to need to make for this project. The items you're going to need is this perf board, a 16 pin IC socket holder, two 555 timers, two 1 mega ohm potentiometers, the knobs that will go to the potentiometers, four 1k ohm resistors, one 1 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, one 104 nanofarad ceramic capacitor, a 9 volt battery clip, and of course a 9 volt battery. Now let's go ahead and assemble the circuit and let's get started. And this right here is the basic schematic that you're going to need to make for this circuit. The only modification that you need to do on this schematic is remove the 470k ohm resistor and replace it with the 1 mega ohm potentiometer. And from pin 1 and 2 you only need to replace the capacitor with the 104 nanofarad capacitor and the 1 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. Each capacitor is for each 555 timer. And yes, by the way, the LED is backwards. So now let's go ahead and assemble the circuit and let's get started. Okay, so now I have right here my perf board and I'm ready to go ahead and take my IC socket holder and place it in the very center of the perf board. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and clamp it into place so that way I can solder the first few pins. There we go, solder just like that and it's flush with the board. Perfect. So now I'm going to go ahead and solder the rest of the pins into place. Next I'm going to take my 104 nanofarad ceramic capacitor and place it onto pin 1 and 2 of the first 5 timer. Now I'm going to take my electrolytic capacitor where the negative goes to pin 1 and positive goes to pin 2 of the other 555 timer. Bend over the lead so I can solder bridge it just like the first capacitor. Now solder them both into place. There we go, just like that. Next I'm going to take my four 1k ohm resistors and put them into place. I'm going to put the first 1k ohm resistor on pin 7 and 8, just like that on both the 505 timers. Pin the leads, and then solder them into place. There we go, just like this. Next, I'm going to take the remaining two 1K ohm resistors and connect them both to pin 3 of the two 555 timers. One end of the resistors will connect to pin 3, and the other end of the resistors will connect to each other. Bend over the leads just like this. Solder them into place and solder the loose ends together so both of the resistors are connected to each other. Now solder bridge them together to pin 3. And it should look just like this. Next I have these two positive and negative wires and I want to connect the positive wire to both of the pin 8's and then the negative wire to both of the pin 1's. That way both of the 555 timers are connected by power. Solder them into place and now both of the pin 8's of the 555 timers are now connected and now both of the negative of the 555 timers are now connected and it should look just like this. Next I want to take these bridge wires and I want to connect pin 8 and 4 and do the same on both of the 555 timers. And 
And there we go, both of the 555 timers are now both connected of pin 8 and 4. And it shall look just like this. Next I'll take more jumper cables and I want to connect pin 2 and 6 on both of the 555 timers. And there you have it, 2 and 6 on both of the 555 timers are now connected. And it should look just like this. Next I'm going to take these bridge wires and I'm going to connect them to pin 6 and 7 so that way they can bridge over to the potentiometers. And there you go, it should look just like this. Bend over the leads, and now solder them into place. Next I'm going to take these wires and I'm going to go ahead and place them in the place where the potentiometers are going to be where the center pin and the far end pin are connected. Center pin is the most important, and both sides of the potentiometer you can choose, either the right side or the left side, it doesn't matter. Solder them into place lightly, and it should look just like this. Next I want to take my 9 volt battery clip and I want to connect the positive to pin 8 and the negative to pin 1. And now solder them into place. And it should look just like this. Next I'm going to take my two 555 timers and put them into the sockets. Place them in just like this. Next I'm going to take my potentiometers and put them into place. And it should look just like this. Bend over the leads. Solder them into place and then complete the solder bridge to the wires and it should look just like this. Next I'm going to take a positive and negative wire which will connect to a speaker. Solder the negative wire to the common ground. Solder the positive wire to those two 1K ohm resistors that are connected to pin 3. Now I'm going to solder the positive wire to the positive of the speaker. Solder the negative wire to the negative part of the speaker. And there you go. And there you have it. The circuit is now complete. Now let's go ahead and test it out. Okay, so now the next step is take some cardboard and house the circuit. Later on in this video, you're going to need to use this slide switch to turn the circuit on and off. And this right here is the housing that I'm going to use to build for the circuit. First, I want to take this piece of cardboard and I want to roll this 9 volt battery into it to get the right measurements for the housing of this battery. Roll the cardboard just like that so it's nice and snug so that way the battery won't slip out and cut off the excess of the cardboard. And now cut off the excess of the cardboard and it should look just like this. Later on I will do the housing of the battery. First I'm going to go ahead and put some hot glue around the speaker so that way I can glue it to the front panel of this housing. There we go, it should look just like this. Put some more hot glue to keep it in more secured.
Next, I'm going to put a bunch of hot glue over the circuit to insulate it to prevent any kind of short circuits. There we go, should look just like this. And next, I'm going to put some hot glue right here onto the speaker, where I'm going to place the circuit. There we go, it should look just like this. Now I'm going to put some hot glue on top to be able to build the top housing. Put some more hot glue to keep that top housing more secured. Next, I'm going to put some hot glue on the bottom part of the housing, so now I can put the bottom panel into place. Just like that. More hot glue to make it more secure. Now I'm ready to put the side panel in and I'm going to do a measurement of where the potentiometer is going to be so that way I can make a hole so I can put the potentiometer through the hole. Now I'm going to take my pin and make a hole just like this. First, I'm going to put my finger behind the potentiometer and then push the piece in just like this to prevent the potentiometer from bending and breaking. And there we go, fits in just like that. Now I'm going to repeat the same process on the opposite side. And there you have it, the second panel should look just like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue everything into place. Next, I'm going to put a little bit more hot glue on the corners, so that way it's in more secured. There we go, just like that. And now I have my back panel, and I'm going to go ahead and make a measurement for my slide switch. There we go, so now what I want to do is draw a rectangle, and then cut out the rectangle, so that way the slide switch can fit. Now I can place my slide switch in, just like that. Perfect fit. Next I'm going to indicate on and off for the switch. Next I'm going to take my positive wire from my battery clip and cut it. Remove the insulation. Tin it. Push both the wires through the hole and solder it into place. And it should look just like this. Next I'm going to put some hot glue on the switch so that way the switch stays in place. What I'm going to do now is move the switch on and off rapidly to prevent the glue from sticking to the switch. So that way the switch will work. And finally, I'm going to glue the back panel into place. There we go, should look just like this. Next I'm going to take these two knobs and connect them to the potentiometers. Don't push too hard, just a little bit and it'll go in just fine. Perfect. And now it's time to make the housing for the 9 volt battery. Blow it up just like this, put some hot glue right here to close the battery into place. Squeeze it gently, 
so that way the glue doesn't glue the battery in. And now you should be able to slide the battery in and out, and it should fit snug. Next, glue the battery housing into place. There we go, just like that. And there you have it, the housing and your circuit is now complete. Now I'm gonna take the battery, plug it in, and you are now ready. Okay, so now it's time to test it out. On switch. And there you have it. Now you know how to make your very own dual 555 timer music console with using just a few simple components and two 555 timers. And there you have it. Thank you for watching SciTi Tech. I hope you learned something new and don't forget to like and subscribe and of course click on the bell icon to be notified for future SciTi Tech videos. Till the next tech, goodbye.